Now you might have seen this model on other videos, it's old but it's one of my favourites. So here we see the cranial cavity up here. And this is the pituitary fossa, where the pituitary gland will sit. You might remember that the pituitary gland is described as the leader of the endocrine orchestra. And in the bones of the skull we see that there are sinuses. This equalises the pressure inside and outside of the sinuses and also makes the skull lighter, otherwise our heads would be too heavy if it was solid bone. And here we see the nostril, so the air is going to come up there where my finger is, into the nasal passages. And as the air goes through the nasal passages, it's warmed by the blood supply, moistened because it's a mucous membrane, and it's also filtered because the nose contains hair and sticky mucus. And of course, air can also go in via the oral cavity. You can see the teeth here, nice big tongue. Now this bit here is the hard palate, which is made of bone. And this bit, well there's bone there. And this bit here is the soft palate, because it's not got a bone inside it. And there we can actually see the tonsils, or some of the tonsils. The tonsils are lymphoid tissue, and they contain lots of lymphocytes, which are a type of leukocyte, a type of white blood cell that protects the body, in this case, particularly the upper airways, from infection. Here we see the vertebrae. And in life, the spinal cord runs down this neural canal, where my pen is just now. Now, the area at the back here that joins the nasal and the oral cavity together, this area is called the pharynx. So the nasopharynx is here, behind the nose. The oropharynx is here behind the mouth and the laryngopharynx is down here because this structure here is the larynx. So air comes down these passages and of course the air goes down through the glottis where my pen is there. That is the opening into the top of the airway. The trachea starts down here. Now when someone swallows, food, saliva and drinks are swallowed from the mouth, but they need to get into the esophagus, which is here. This is the esophagus at the back. It is posterior to the anterior airway. The airway is at the front. So a flap of tissue during swallowing has to go down to cover the top of the airway. The top of the airway is called the glottis. So this flap of tissue that goes down during swallowing is called the epiglottis. So during swallowing, the epiglottis falls down, seals the top of the airway, meaning that the food has to go down the posterior esophagus. Otherwise, food and drink would go into the upper airway, causing choking. And occasionally we say that something goes down the wrong way. And what this means is that some food goes down the airway and that causes vigorous choking. Of course, if it's a large piece of food, it can actually block off the airway, causing asphyxiation meaning we would need to take first aid measures to correct that. But normally during swallowing, the epiglottis covers the glottis, allowing food to enter the esophagus.